Chapter 31, A Song in the Dark The terrible, foul odor of the dungeon did not bother Nig. Perhaps that is because, sometimes, when Uncle was giving her a good clout to the ear, he missed his mark and delivered a good clout to Nig's nose instead. This happened often enough that it interpreted the proper working of Nig's olfactory senses. And so it was the overwhelming stench of despair and hopelessness and evil was not at all discernible to her, and she went happily down the twisting and turning stairs. Gore, she shouted. It's dark, ain't it? Yes, it is, Meg, she answered herself. But if I was a princess, I would be so glittery light-like there wouldn't be a place in the world that was dark to me. At this point, Midgery So broke into a little song that went something like this. I ain't the Princess P, but someday I will be. The P, ha he, someday I will be. Mig, as you can imagine, wasn't much of a singer, more of a bellower, really. But in her little song, there was, to the rightly tuned ear, a certain kind of music. And as Mig went singing down the stairs of the dungeon, there appeared from the shadows a rat wrapped in a cloak of red and wearing a spoon on his head. Yes, yes, whispered the rat, a lovely song, just the song I have been waiting to hear. And Ruskiro quietly fell in step beside Midgery So, Midgery So. At the bottom of the stairs, Mig shouted out into the darkness, Gore, it's me, Midgery So. Most calls me Mig, delivering your food. Come and get it, Mr. Deep Downs. There was no response. The dungeon was quiet, but it was not quiet in a good way. It was quiet in an ominous way. It was quiet in the way of small, frightening sounds. There was the snail-like slither of water oozing down the walls, and from around a darkened corner there came the low moan of someone in pain. And then, too, there was the noise of the rats going about their business, their sharp nails hitting the stones of the dungeon, and their long tails dragging behind them through the blood and muck. Reader, if you were standing in the dungeon, you would certainly hear all of these disturbing sounds. If I were standing in the dungeon, I would hear these sounds. If we were standing together in the dungeon, we would hear these sounds, and we would be very frightened. We would cling to each other in our fear. That's right. But what did Midgery so hear? Absolutely nothing. And so she was not afraid at all, not in the least. She held the tray up higher, and the candle shed its weak light on the towering pile of spoons and bowls and kettles. Gore, said Mig. Look at them things. I ain't never imagined there'd be so many spoons in the whole wide world. There is more to this world than anyone could imagine, said a booming voice from the darkness. True, true, whispered Roscuro. The old jailer speaks true. Gore, said Mig. Who said that? And she turned the direction of the jailer's voice.